Joining me now with reaction is Ann Coulter, conservative commentator and author of Resistance is Futile. Also with me is Alan Orr, immigration and civil rights attorney. Ann, I want to start with you. What recourse does the Trump administration have in dealing with migrants that are illegally crossing the border while trying to seek asylum? Um, well, I think maybe having firearms would be helpful. That was hilarious. What, they're like British cops? They don't have guns? Do our troops on the DMZ have firearms? Um, this is this is a little more important than protecting South Korea, as important as that is. It's our country. Um, I mean, there are a lot of things Trump could do if he has to, if he's not going to build a wall, which apparently he isn't. Um, he could go a few yards into Mexico, um, have an emergency... Um, um, military action there, but I don't, I don't think it's going to help with billy clubs. <laughs> well, so, Alan, I wanted, so as Secretary Kirsten Nielsen said yesterday that there are 500 criminals uh, in, involved or in the mix of the migrants as well as gang members. I want to play some sound for you for former ICE director Tom Holman and get your thoughts on it. Take a listen. I was called a fear monger, but you know what? Unfortunately, I was right. Now we're going to talk more caravans come, enter illegally, put themselves in the hands of criminal organizations. We're going to bankroll smuggling organizations. We bankroll drug cartels who control the corridors heading to the border. And these people are put at risk. Women will be raped. People will die crossing the border. Children will drown. People will be misused by these criminal organizations. Have we seen over and over again last year and a half how many people have died at the hands of these criminals? So, Alan, to Mr. Homan's point, as well as what Secretary Nielsen laid out, aren't are there real national con con security concerns and, you know, defense concerns at the southern border right now? No, I don't think there's any more concerns than there are at the other border, right? Every day, hundreds of thousands of individuals apply to enter this country. And specifically at the Tijuana port, at least 100,000 individuals apply every day. So an extra 2,000 or 4,000 for the United States to sort to see if they are available for entry or should be turned away should not be a problem for the United States. So therefore, this whole thing is basically theater, political theater, How in so? which, because the caravan has been coming for years, and Ann has actually also said that on the show, and this is the first time that we've ever deployed, actually, we have the National Guard and the troops at the border for such a small number of people. But he's not the first president to send troops to the border. President Obama did that. President George W. Bush, President H. W. Bush. He's certainly not the pre first president to do that. That's not not to send to the border for at this this level and this number and at this magnitude to address individuals who are coming here, which I don't even call them the caravan. I call them survivors because they're sort of fleeing for their lives. So to meet people who are fleeing for their lives with guns instead of welcoming them and using the American laws that we've all agreed on for Congress to let them allow to apply for asylum, that's not very American. Well, and it's not just President Trump and Republicans that have concerns with what's going on at the southern border. You even have the Tijuana mayor wearing a hat saying, you know, make uh, Tijuana great again. You have Mexican protesters out there saying this is our country and having concerns with what's happening. So what do you make to what Alan just said? Well, that's the proof positive that they are not fleeing for their lives, which is why um, for asylum, you either have to apply in your home country or you apply in the first country you come to. All of the Mexican protesters, and by the way, um, I mean, I guess it's fun needling the Mexicans for being um, hypocrites on illegal immigration, but I don't really care what Mexico's policy is. This is this is our country. Our policy should be what Donald Trump ran on. Um, we, we're trying to run a country here. It isn't, it isn't right. an international lounge at JFK. Um, but you have to apply either to the in the country you're in or the first country you that's come to. That's just factually to. not correct. That's please stop saying. Please stop. Please stop saying that. You're not an immigrant. Well, well, Alan, but why why aren't just, these migrants doing it the right way? Why aren't they going to ports of authority? Why do you see some of them breaking the law and illegally crossing the border? If they truly have a credible fear threshold that is being met, why not just do it the right way? Okay, well, let's just correct the record, first of all. You can't apply for asylum in your home country. It doesn't work that way. There is a rule you can, of course, apply to the first country which well, you enter. Of course, in Mexico, people who are not doing Mexico it the correct has, way or legally Mexico, crossing the border. That's let a fact. Let me finish. In Mexico, over the course of the last couple of months, has accepted more immigrants than they have in the past. They've actually stepped up the numbers of actually integrating people into society more than the United States has. So, all those things combined with people who are fleeing for their lives, coming thousands of miles, they don't know where the port of entry is, right? If you've never been to a city before, you don't know where the port is. And continually, this administration has made it hard for individuals who do appear at the port, as you have seen on Tuesday when the president closed down the port for no reason at all but to others send fear and then only allowing a couple of families in at a time. So, therefore, this concept of them 
crossing the border illegally or them being illegal or them being illegal aliens when they're not even in the country, really, we should stop saying that, right? And so the law allows, the Constitution allows, through the Administration Act, that doesn't matter how they enter the country between ports, which we heard from the Ninth Circuit, they're still allowed to apply for asylum. And if we want to change that, we should change Congress. Well, the laws are also being exploited. We know that as a fact. You have 80 percent of these individuals passing their initial threshold. Uh, with immigration officials, and then only 20 percent are actually granted asylum in immigration court. So that is also a fact. And I want to get your take on what Chief Justice uh, Roberts recently said um, in criticizing President Trump and going after the Ninth Circuit, uh, saying we do not have Obama judges or Trump judges, Bush judges or Clinton judges. What we have is an extraordinary group of dedicated judges. Your thoughts on that? Um, well, I warned the country about Justice Roberts, uh, thought he was a mistake. The one thing I will definitely give President Trump credit for is appointing justices like Kavanaugh and not Harriet Myers and, and Justice Roberts. Um, I don't know why he's jumping into this. I have a lot of complaints with Trump. That tweet was absolutely right. Um, I'm glad he's appointing judges that are enforcing the law. And yes, the law is. You seek asylum in the first country you get to. You are, by definition, not fleeing for your life when you are trekking through thousands of miles of other countries. And, oh, well, welfare isn't good enough here in Mexico. I think I'll keep going. The reason they keep going to the U.S. and the reason it makes a difference um, where we set up the troops, they should be, as I said, a few yards into Mexico, is once a non-Mexican steps on U.S. soil, we can't turn them away. The idea was to stop human smuggling when, in fact, it's done exactly the opposite. It's creating human sm smuggling. So Mexicans, we can turn away at the border if we catch them. Um, that's why we want it all. Um, anyone who is a non-Mexican who has just walked through this enormous country, not fleeing for their lives, looking right. for better welfare, once they step on U.S. soil, we can't just send them home. We have to give them hearings. The right. hearings go on and on. They just escape into the country, and there you are. All right. Well, thank you, Ann Allen. Appreciate it.